我期望五年、十年以后，我们的。I hope in the next five or ten years, our center will become one of the top five mathematical institutes in the world, being equal to its counterparts at Harvard and Princeton. I think we can make it. This is Professor Xing Tong Yao, former chair of the mathematics department at Harvard University. He is the first person of Chinese descent who has been awarded the Fields Medal, the top prize in mathematics. Over a decade ago, he returned to China from the United States and founded the Yao Mathematical Sciences Center at Tsinghua University. President Gu gave me a very good impression when he visited me in 2008. He was very honest in asking me to come to Tsinghua University. At the same time, I said I wanted to make Tsinghua's academic level in mathematics the best in the world after I came to Tsinghua. Now more than a decade has passed. Has this world-famous mathematician achieved his objective? Let's find out after this short break. From north to south, east to west, people in China are chasing their dreams and leaving their mark. Want to know how they beat the odds and made a difference? Footprints brings you the true life stories of their journeys. On one sunny day in May 2008, an unusual guest visited Professor Xing Tong Yao at Harvard University in the United States. President Gu of Tsinghua University, entrusted by his party chief Chen Xi, asked me to work at Tsinghua. They promised to make huge efforts to raise the academic level of Tsinghua's mathematics faculty. President Gu, his full name Gu Binglin, had been drawn to Yao's home because of Yao's academic achievement and fame in his field, and this is why he wanted to encourage him to come to Tsinghua University, one of the most prestigious higher learning institutes in China. At the time, Professor Yao was the director of Harvard's mathematics department. He also served on the faculty of Harvard's Department of Physics. Such academic excellence across two departments is unusual in the history of Harvard. In the 1970s, Yao, then in his 20s, had already proved the Calabi conjecture. The conjecture is about the existence of certain nice Riemannian metrics on certain complex manifolds, made by Italian-born American mathematician Eugenio Calabi. Yao is also considered one of the major contributors to the development of modern differential geometry and geometric analysis. As a result, in 1982 he was awarded the Fields Medal, the mathematical equivalent of the Nobel Prize. In the following decades, he received more than a dozen major international prizes in both math and physics, such as Cranford Prize and the United States National Medal of Science. With these spectacular achievements and unparalleled talent, Yao was considered by President Gu of Tsinghua University to be the perfect candidate. The meeting between the two was fruitful. President Gu gave me a very good impression when he visited me in 2008. He was very honest in asking me to come to Tsinghua University. At the same time, I said I wanted to make Tsinghua's academic level in mathematics the best in the world after I came to Tsinghua. In December 2009, a year and a half after their meeting, Yao went to Tsinghua University in Beijing as director of the Yao Mathematical Sciences Center. But the tasks lying ahead of him were immense. Xiao Jie was director of the Tsinghua University Department of Mathematical Sciences between 2006 and 2017. After the Yao Mathematical Sciences Center was founded in 2009, Xiao was made its deputy director, assisting Yao with logistics and management. Xiao had first-hand experience of the difficulties faced by the center. At the very beginning, our center had only a few offices. We were not just short of office space and money; we were also short of talent. Lacking talent was the biggest difficulty faced by Professor Yao. Trying to beat the odds, he set his eyes on young scholars overseas. The school gave me a lot of freedom. 
Tsinghua University has given me great leeway, enabling me to recruit the best scholars directly whenever I find them. But we still faced certain difficulties in the first two years of our center. The first important person I recruited was Yu Ping. This is Yu Ping lecturing at Tsinghua University. He earned his doctor's degree in mathematics at Princeton University in the United States. In 2010, after graduating, he started looking for a job. Being a rookie in the academic world, he had made no significant academic achievement, but he was accepted by Professor Yao. Yu Ping has a vivid memory of his interaction with Yao. One day, I wrote an email to Mr. Yao. Unexpectedly, I got a very quick reply, just a few minutes. He asked me to come to him in person directly. I was anxious and took a train to meet him. In our meeting in a classroom, he sat down, cross-legged, and asked me to illustrate on the blackboard what I had been doing in math. The meeting lasted for more than half an hour. In the end, Mr. Yao said what I had been doing sounded not bad, but he said he wasn't sure and needed to check with other experts before offering me a job. It was only after two days that he sent me an email offering me the job. It was the passion and potential in Yu Ping that had led Yao to recruit him. He was very passionate about what he had been doing. He's very serious about his academic work. I thought he would be a very good scholar in the future. I was pleased, so I asked him not to wait and just come to Tsinghua University as soon as possible. As a result, Yu Ping became a teacher at the Yao Mathematical Sciences Center at Tsinghua University in 2010. Since then, Yu has published several papers in the most influential international mathematical journals. In October 2020, he was awarded the China Youth Science and Technology Prize for his research in mathematics. Professor Yao says he is happy to see what Yu has achieved. He has done a good job. He has made several important breakthroughs. He has done a good job. He has made several important breakthroughs in mathematics. This has led some universities in the United States to invite him to work for them. Johns Hopkins University was one of them, but we managed to persuade him to stay. I told him he would have greater opportunities here in our center. He agreed. I can say he is loyal to our center. Yu Ping is just one of many talents Yao has recruited from around the world. Xiao Jie, deputy director of the Yao Mathematical Sciences Center, says Professor Yao has built a superb team with his insight into who is really talented. As Mr. Yao has always been on the front line of academic research, he is far more capable of identifying experts than other ordinary mathematicians. But a first-rate mathematical institute should not only be staffed by young professionals. More importantly, it needs established top mathematicians. But how to recruit them? Yao faced another difficulty. We need to employ scholars who have made real contributions in mathematics for the long term. It's not that easy to get them to agree to come, as they take into account the cultural differences and the reputation of our center. You know, at the time, our center had not made its name in the world. They were unclear about its prospects. If they agree to work at our center for the long term, they and their family have to move here. Many of them felt that this kind of job change was risky. After a search lasting for nearly two years, Yao finally tried his luck with Dutch mathematician Eduard Loyenha. Lo Yanha works in algebraic geometry and the theory of algebraic groups. Two years before he retired from Utrecht University in 2013, Yao wrote him a poem. So Yao attended the conference and he gave a talk and he gave me a present, and the present was in fact this poem that he had written. The conference Professor Lo Yanha refers to was held in the Netherlands in 2011. It was on the sidelines of this conference that Yao had a meeting with Lo Yanha. 
During the conference, I visited Liu Yianha and his wife at his home. I briefed him on the good prospects of mathematical research in China, and I wrote a poem for him. In the poem, Yao invited Luo Yanha to come to work in China when he retired from Utrecht University. So this happened, I think, in 2011. At that time, I was also sort of in my last year as a full professor at my home university in Utrecht. In the Netherlands, there is a mandatory retirement, and the retirement age is 65. I would think I was 64 at the time. And the retirement I was certainly not looking forward to because I love to do what I am used to do, namely to teach and to, to do research. And so I came here. In 2013, Lo Yanha moved to Tsinghua University with his family, serving as a full time professor at Yao's center. Yao says Lo Yanha has played a very important role in the center since then. <laughs> He has been diligent in his academic research, which is world class. He has trained many postgraduates and some undergraduates. He has gradually established a world class academic branch within our center. He has also created a very good atmosphere for us. Lu Yanha says he's met a lot of promising talents at Tsinghua University. These graduate courses, there are often many undergraduates. And these undergraduates are, uh, well, they are very good. And sometimes they are even the best. Lo Yanha is just one of the world-renowned mathematicians Yo has recruited. But Yo has sometimes faced rejection. Statistics is one of the most needed subjects in China. As I myself am not an expert in statistics, it's difficult for me to recruit statisticians. Once I flew to the United Kingdom to talk with a professor, I presumed that he would come to work for us, but in the end, he didn't. The setback didn't dampen Yao's determination to find a top international statistician. In 2018, he successfully recruited one from Harvard, Donald Rubin. I've known him for a long time because the Department of Statistics at Harvard is upstairs from the Department of Mathematics. We came across each other very often. He's very humorous. I had a lot of interaction with him. Initially, I jokingly asked him to come to work in China if he wasn't busy. I thought he would turn it down. But he didn't. So I went into detail about recruiting him. We talked lots of times during a time span of several months. He finally accepted my invitation. I think I can give him great opportunities to develop. Rubin had chaired the Department of Statistics at Harvard for 13 years. He's best known for the Rubin causal model, a set of methods designed for causal inference with observational data and for his methods for dealing with missing data. He has now been working at Tsinghua University for about three years, content with his choice and still in a cordial friendship with Yao. I've known uh, Professor Yao for a few years at Harvard. A brilliant guy with a big heart. Loves what what he does and loves to try to help other people do better at at those kinds of things. I think part of the responsibility here that was to try to build a reputation in Chinua, not in mathematics, because Yao and his colleagues have already brought that in, in pure mathematics, but in statistics. It takes a lot of time trying to bring well-known visitors, people who are interesting to talk to, interesting to uh, listen to, give lectures, and I think I've already done that to some extent. Yao says Rupin has acted like a magnet for outstanding statisticians to come to work at his center. <laughs> Thanks to Professor Rubin's reputation and influence, our center has recruited another two statisticians from abroad. I hope we will have more people joining us and making our center a powerhouse of statistics. Professor Rubin told me that we must catch up with Harvard's Department of Statistics within five years. I agreed and encouraged him. I promised him we can give him as much financial support as he needs. 
So far, more than 60 full-time mathematicians and statisticians from around the world work at your center. Now let's take a short break. Then, in the second part of the story, we'll take a look at how Professor Yao is cultivating the next generation of Chinese mathematicians. Stay tuned. You've been listening to Footprints. The Yao Mathematical Sciences Center often holds symposiums on other subjects, such as physics, to broaden the horizons of its staff and students. Doing academic research needs stimulation by fresh new information from other sources. We have invited many first-class mathematicians from foreign countries to interact with our center staff and students, who should also have their own ideas. I hope they can have frequent communication with scholars in physics and engineering. So they can pursue a new direction in their own research. Li Si, a young professor, is one of your students. He earned his doctor's degree in mathematics at Harvard in 2014. He then returned to China and joined the Yao Mathematical Sciences Center. Li is doing an interdiscipline between math and physics. As a new field of research, this interdiscipline involves great difficulties and uncertainties. Li is grateful for Yao's crucial support. I discussed about my research with Mr. Yao one day. He asked me why I wanted to do research in this field. I said I was very interested in it. At the time, I also checked with other experts to see whether I could succeed in this new area. Mr. Yao was one of the most supportive experts for me. Yao gives his reasons for his support for Li. Research into all those important academic questions involves risks. If we know in advance that we can succeed. Doesn't mean the question is not that important. Genuine mathematical or scientific research always comes with risks. If there were no risks, it would be uninteresting. For more than ten years, Yao has been a staunch supporter of Li Si in his risky research. As his former student, I treat Mr. Yao as both my teacher and my friend. Sometimes, when I turn to him for help, he gives me advice or tells me who I can seek help from if he doesn't know how to solve the questions. Whenever I'm confused in my research, Mr. Yao encourages me, saying, "Stick to it. In 10 or 20 years, you will find what you are doing is really important." In 2016, Li's research was recognized by mathematicians around the world. He was awarded the Morningside Medal of Mathematics, dubbed the Chinese version of the Fields Medal. His research is very important, but there are few scholars who can understand it. You would have to be a superb mathematician and physicist to understand it. Such a scholar is rare, so I'm very pleased that he has reached this level. While Li Si is making progress in his research, a group of teenage math prodigies are being cultivated as the next generation of Chinese mathematicians at your center. My name is Yang Dai Rong. I'm from Shanghai. The pressure of learning has been great for me in the past three to four months. Yang was in the first group of teenage math students that Yao recruited for his center in December 2018. The teenagers were selected from a number of high school students around China. They each went through a meticulous screening process and face-to-face -face interviews with Yao. Holding high hopes for the teenage academics, Yao shares his own experience with them on how to do academic research. When I was an undergraduate, one important method of training was to find and then solve the problems in the textbooks. As an undergraduate, you should have a very good foundation of knowledge. When you begin your postgraduate research, your tutors will presume that you have already understood the basic questions. Then it's too late for you to lay the foundation of knowledge and conduct the most elementary research. 
Yao has arranged for the best teachers to cultivate the teenage students. Li Si and Yu Ping are among the teachers tutoring them. Li Si says Yao insists on giving the best education to the teenage math prodigies. Mr. Yao always tells us the important thing for our center and also for our nation is teaching and researching. This means teaching students and doing research is an essential part of our job. Every week, I hold regular discussions with the students on their homework. This teaching method comes from Mr. Yao's own experience. Yu Ping says Mr. Yao cares for each of the young students. I teach a course called mathematical analysis. In one exam, my class performed very well in general, I think. But Mr. Yao asked me why one particular student had scored very low. Actually, that student didn't score low. It was only in comparison with the other students that the gap appeared. But Mr. Yao cares about this and asked me to explain. Yao's care for the young students results partly from his high expectations for them. The future of China as a whole lies with young people. I hope the next generation of mathematicians from China can reach the top. These young people are very important. We should direct them onto the path they should take. Now, with more than a decade of development, the Tsinghua University Yao Mathematical Sciences Center has made great achievements. In the 2020 QS World University rankings by subject, Tsinghua was ranked 20th in mathematics. By comparison, it came only 96th in the 2009 edition of the same rankings. Professor Edward Loyenha and Donald Rubin both speak highly of the achievement. I cannot think of any math department during my career that has grown so fast as this center. I don't know how long it should take, but it is clear that Chinua has come up in the ranking fairly dramatically. In general, China has progressed tremendously with, within a very short time, as, as everybody here knows. Yao's deputy, Xiao Jie, says Yao is irreplaceable for the development of Tsinghua University's mathematics. To some extent, he acts as a precious bridge between the top mathematical research centers of the world and Tsinghua University. No one else can replace him in this role. Mr. Yao is like a big tree which has a strong trunk, new leaves and birds nesting in it. Yao himself believes his center still needs to improve. I'm very happy that our center has ranked so much higher. At the very beginning, we had some difficulties. Fortunately, we have been able to forge ahead thanks to the support given by the university as a whole. I hope in the next five or ten years, our center will become one of the top five mathematical institutes in the world, being equal to its counterparts at Harvard and Princeton. I think we can make it. In June 2019, the Eighth International Congress of Chinese Mathematicians was held at Tsinghua University. The occasion drew about 10,000 mathematicians from around the world. Knowing Yao's 70th birthday coincided with the occasion, the Congress organizers held a celebration for him. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to Professor Yao! Happy birthday to you. Addressing the conference attendees, Yao described his life. It's about 50 years since I left Hong Kong for the United States. In all those years, I missed everything here in my motherland. I was studying in the Chinese University of Hong Kong. I graduated from its Chongqi College. There was a couplet on the gate of the college. It was written by my father. Part of the couplet says, Be lofty and knowledgeable, follow the law of nature, and connect scholarship no matter whether it's from the East or the West. These words have impressed me my whole life. I think we should follow these words when we carry out academic research.
What we seek in math is truth, no matter whether you are from the east or the west. With that, we conclude this edition of Footprints. Thanks for listening. For our program producer Ying Xiuqi, this is Lai Ming. See you next time.